Now most people own cars like Toyota Camrys, Honda Accords, and Ford Fusions. Now there's nothing really wrong with those vehicles. They get you from point A to point B just fine. However, they are admittedly dull and uninspiring. Some people like to have fun with their vehicles and they like to create custom builds. Some people like to be challenged by creating these custom builds and there's no better way to challenge yourself than by seeing a project car come to fruition. Now I understand that's a big proposition and if you've been teetering on the fence not quite sure whether you should get into it, I'm here to tell you today that the payoff is absolutely worth the time and the effort. And what an exciting machine we get to showcase today. It began life as a 1994 E36 BMW 318iS. When the car left Deutschland back in 94, it was equipped with a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated double overhead cam in line 4, producing 138 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs and 129 foot pounds of torque at 4,500 RPMs. This car wasn't too much back in its day. However, these cars, along with many BMWs, are renowned for their playful and balanced chassis. With a Palpatine approved curb weight of 2,866 pounds, it makes a modern hot hatch appear about as gluttonous as Wavio Man, and with a Thanos approved weight distribution of roughly 50 50, it's easy to see why the E36 is the project car of choice for many, especially when handling is at the forefront of the project's design philosophy. This specific car has been built with one goal in mind to drift circles around Fujiwara Takumi and to give him a run for his money on the Akina Pass. For those that are not familiar with drifting, allow me to give you a brief origin story. Drifting itself is an advanced driving technique in which a car is thrown into a controlled slide to navigate tight corners without sacrificing too much speed. While the roots of drifting date back to the early days of rally racing, it was the Japanese that perfected and popularized this style of driving, in the form of a gentleman named Takahashi Kunimitsu, whom is often credited with the title title of the father of drifting. Ironically, his racing career actually began with many successful bouts of motorcycle championships, until an injury led him to transfer from two wheels to four. With the combination of the low grip race tires of the 60s and the 70s, and no driving aids since they didn't exist, Takahashi realized that the optimal way around a corner was to provide just the right amount of slip angle to swing out the rear of a car, while keeping it on the proper racing line. Of course, over time, drifting became more of an art form as opposed to a driving technique, but nevertheless, it has become a staple of modern car culture. But enough history lessons. How about we talk to the gentleman that actually built this car, and mind you, he did this in his garage. You can follow him on his mini social media accounts, of which I will leave the links below. Alright, I'm here with my buddy Tyler today. Tyler, how is it going? It's going. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> now, first question I have for you is uh, why an E36? Out of all the different cars you could choose for uh, drift racing, is there any specific reason that you went with an E36? I couldn't afford 240s. <laughs> that was the whole thing. Getting into an E36 was a cheaper option when I was younger, and now they're just on the same market. But I've been through six of them, and I've only okay. had one 240, and the 240 sat for three years, and I've dailyed these. So. All right, all right. Daily this car. So this one specifically, you do daily drive this car. Yep. What's it like? Uh, it's rough. <laughs> I've done way too much to it to for it to still be a daily, but I haven't picked up another car to do the same to do, process like, the again. Daily driving and yeah, stuff like that. So now it's just uh, every bushing on it. It's solid except for motor and trans mounts. It has welded reinforcement plates, uh, solid lollipop bushings, Ackerman okay. on the steering is all messed up. <laughs> Bump steer super hard because my rack's going out. It's a whole bunch of problems. <laughs> what was the build process kind of like? You said you built this in your garage? Yeah, I built it in the garage. I bought the car in Virginia, um, pulled it out of a field. It sat for like four years, and then some dude just listed it, and it had a super bad vacuum leak and a four-cylinder okay. in it. So we brought it home, and it stayed with a four-cylinder in it for about three days. And okay. then over the weekend, we did the swap 
with the motor that's in it now because um, I had everything in the garage. And then we just, from then on, like I, I registered it before we pulled the motor out. Okay. So I just decided I had to get it done. I sold my other car and I was like, I have no other option now. I have to drive it. <laughs> so from then on, it's just been a downward spiral of spending too much money. That's understandable. Project car life. It is what it is. <laughs> now, uh, is there anything else you want to kind of like go through on the car, like build wise, anything that kind of makes it unique? Cause this is real cool by the way. Like I really like what you've done with it. I mean, to be honest nowadays, this is a pretty cookie cutter E36 build based on like the kit and everything. Cause okay. anyone that spends a lot of money on them, they all kind of look like this. But, uh, I mean, I can go through the whole thing if you want. Yeah, go for it. So it's got, uh, fitment lab over fenders. Okay. Click tuning side skirts and lips. Um, it's a arcade ultra hood vent and normally people would do like a D max style hood vent. Um, but they don't fit cause they're made for two forties. So the body lines don't line up and they look goofy. Fair enough. But, uh, shout out arcade ultra. They actually made one to fit E36 body lines specifically. Nice. And they're pretty affordable. It was only like 140 bucks shipped. Okay. But, uh, those, a wing I made just because the wings that were kind of on the market, <laughs> just because the wings that were kind of on the market weren't very, uh, I don't know, everybody runs them. They're all the same. The only one that I kind of found interesting was there was a, uh, what's it called? Acrylic one. Okay. Where it's like colored and clear and it, it's just, they're made to fit, but they're very expensive. So I didn't want to go that route, but this was $60 to make. <laughs> uh, it's got... Uh, what are they? I don't even know. E Speed, E Star, E Speed Racing seat okay. in it. I have the other one. I just haven't put it in because I have to make my own brackets. But I got that off of some old guy that was building a Camaro in his garage oh, that gave up on it. And he's like, bought these brand new. I can't find them on the internet, but I got them for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> so that's fine. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as looks. It has a sunroof delete. Okay. Because I'm too tall for a sunroof. <laughs> so. It took about that much out of the roof. Of course, just for aside clearance. from being a portable high ground, it looks like Tyler's actually good at building cars, right? No, no, the second <laughs> part's a lie. <laughs> now, if anyone wanted to kind of get into a project like this, what's the first piece of advice you would give them? Don't. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, no, honestly, if you're going to get into any project car, this should be a, like a generalized rule. It doesn't matter what vehicle or make, what, whatever you're looking at. Um, just do the maintenance. Okay. Just like get the car, figure out what it actually needs to drive and be on the road, do the maintenance. And as you go, if you can find something that's an upgrade to the OEM, do that. But don't go crazy until you're like committed to it being a project car. Okay. Because once you start doing stuff like some of the stuff on my car, I mean a lot of it because it's a BMW, but if I break something, I have to order it. I can't just go and buy the part. It has to be ordered from somewhere or something stupid. I got to wait for it to come in. Nowhere ever ends up having what I actually need. All right. So you just have to be careful about that. Watch out for that. And make sure you're not making it impractical to drive while it's still a daily, if you're going to keep it as a daily. Like, the fact that I have one wiper <laughs> kind of sucks sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, we always got rain out here, so it's fine. That's fair. But all right. Sounds good, Tyler. How about we get it on the road and see how she feels? And so the time came for me to get in the driver's seat, and in order to not disturb the pesky Karens of Bloomfield Hills, we had to be discreet. So we not so discreetly, discreetly headed on to the open road. Avoid the potholes, because this is an extremely stiff car, and I have to really yell, because there is no sound deadening in here at all. No, it's gonna rattle the whole time. <laughs> And rattle it did. Nevertheless, we persisted on our not so discreet, discreet trek to find a more open road through Karen Hills. Uh, uh sorry, Bloomfield Hills. And then we immediately decided we weren't being discreet enough. <laughs>
To say that I was enjoying myself would be a massive understatement. Being behind the wheel of this car made me feel like a child without a single care in the world. But before I give my final thoughts on the car, Tyler and I discussed more of the build during our not-so-discreet, discreet joyride. I do not have a microphone for this GoPro at all, so I'm gonna sound hoarse after this one. <laughs> now, are there any specific tracks you like to go to, or you just kind of go to whatever events, or...? I don't do anything in Michigan, because all the tracks kind of suck. That was a terrible downshift, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Clutch at home sitting on the shelf, so. Alright. If it goes, it goes. And I like the short shifter and everything you have in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually, so it's an eBay chassis mount shifter that was like 60 bucks. Okay. And this is the longest setting. Okay. Now, you said you had quite a few of these before this one? Yeah, this is uh, five or six. <laughs> Alright. Right. Just this chassis, not BMWs. I've had more BMWs. Okay. About uh, how much power is it putting out? Whatever's left of 189. <laughs> Fair enough. I, if I had to guess, maybe like 170-ish. Okay, that's not bad. How much does the car weigh? I know you took a lot of weight out. There's no back seats. You uh, got like nothing left on the door panels. I know you did a sunroof delete, which glass is heavy. That takes quite oh, a bit of weight metal. off. Oh, it was metal? Yeah. Well, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was metal and it goes all the way to the back. Okay. Because it bends and slides in. Alright. Uh, honestly, I don't know how much weight I've actually taken out. Okay. And I was kind of waiting to, to measure the weight of the car when uh, when I got the cage done and the V8 swapped on. Okay. That way I'm like, okay, this is its final form. This is when it matters. <laughs> I gotta figure out which corner has the most weight, what I gotta do, you know. It's final form. Yeah. Because <laughs> once it gets the cage and the V8, then it is, then it is the track car. It's not like a okay. street car anymore. So, once you do that, are you planning on getting something else to be the street car? Then this will be exclusively a track car? Yep. Okay. So, I'm probably going to end up doing the same thing I did with this, where I'm just like, I'm going to swap it and drive it, and, you know, it's good. And then I end up way overbuilding it to be a daily. <laughs> Fair enough. And making my life hard. <laughs> but it all depends on what I can get my hands on next. Okay. bolts up you could do it it's just extra work to get the car to feel how it was supposed to be you know what i mean i gotcha how how often i'm curious how often do you have it like in the shop changing stuff around only when it breaks <laughs> <laughs> all right can i, I mean, not stall with it being a daily you know it's not it's not full full race car yet so there's still a lot of wiggle room with what i can get away with taking care of okay like obviously it gets a oil change every time it looks at me the wrong way. So. <laughs> because this motor does have about 100, 180, 185,000 miles on it now. Okay. Yeah, like this, the kerfunk of the shifter is amazing. And I know it's just an eBay part, but just uh, it feels so good. There's um, there's other options you can get for them. There's some really expensive ones. There's you can get gated ones. You can get the spring assisted like really fancy ones, but yeah. 
can take the uh, the throttle body on okay. these. They like to rip. They'll corrode and fall apart, basically. Okay. And even if you put a new eBay one on, sure it's twenty five bucks and it's no big deal. But I'd rather spend the eighty dollars once to get the silicone one than okay. twenty five bucks every three months because my intake bounces. Is this no, the so, four banger full factory? Yes. They, the straight six came in these cars. Like the majority. Okay. And straight sixes. I mean, this is the same motor between the five series and the three series. Okay. Because the five twenty five and the same motor and everything. Okay. Um. that's so like cheap and easy to change that 
I don't see the point in sticking with the same thing all the time, trying to see what's the best, but... That's fair. I feel like I found a good middle ground with this, where it's still loud and aggressive, but it's not... Overbearing? Yeah. <laughs> to just drive through a neighborhood, I can still do it quietly. Alright. As you can probably tell, I clearly enjoyed my time triggering the Karens while driving around in this machine. So let's talk about what it's actually like. First, I'll start with something that's a bit subjective, and that's the styling. I personally quite like how this car looks. It was built to Tyler's personal tastes, and it gives off an attitude and confidence that clearly doesn't care about my personal opinion of it, even though I like it. I quite like the stance of the vehicle as well, thanks to not only the wide body but also in part to the coilovers and modified control arms. At some angles, it has these square lines that are about as staunch and burly as the shoulders of Alex Louis Armstrong, while simultaneously, viewing the car from other angles gives off these smooth, properly proportioned lines that are about as elegant as Yorha unit to be. However, the chef's kiss is the fact that a lot of that body styling is functional. The excessive camber isn't for show, but to keep the car stable in the middle of a drift, so that the front wheels have a larger contact patch with the pavement when they reach full steering lock. The coilovers help to lower the center of gravity and reduce body roll to keep the car balanced mid-drift, while the wide body allows for those modifications to exist without causing the wheels to rub against the inside of the fenders, while simultaneously allowing for a wider wheel and tire setup to be fitted. It's not every day that you see a car that strikes curiosity in the mind of the bystanders. Seeing this car for the first time is like being struck by the lightning produced by Aurora Monroe, and whether you love it or hate it, it's going to draw your attention irregardless. Just ask that Veloster in driver. However, because this is a purpose-built car, you do sacrifice a bit of comfort. Well, actually, you sacrifice all of it. This is the most stiff riding vehicle I've ever been behind the wheel of, but that stiffness allows for stability as well as allowing the chassis to communicate what's going on below the car to the driver. The interior is almost completely stripped of any creature comforts. The door panels have been replaced with aluminum, the rear seats eliminated, the trunk liner is gone, and the sunroof has been deleted and there isn't even any air conditioning. But by removing unnecessary components, the weight of the car can be dropped in order to improve the power to weight ratio, increasing overall responsiveness, and improve the weight distribution. Comfort in this car is destroyed for the sake of performance. That means that, unlike 90% of your Facebook friends and Instagram followers, this car is not superficial. It knows exactly what purpose it serves, and I imagine that if it had a face, it would be looking about as smug as Anya Forger. So perhaps you're looking for a chassis for your project, and you've decided on an E36. What sort of prices can you expect? Oh, and just as Tyler stated earlier, you can find the E36 in its many variants for some reasonable prices. A quick trip to car gurus shows some high mileage examples of the E36 starting from below 3000 going all the way up to around $17,000 for absolutely pristine low mileage examples. If you are willing to fork up slightly more cash, then you might be able to snag a cleaner chassis for your build, which may smooth out the modification process, so perhaps expect to spend around 5 to 7 grand. You can even find versions of the E36 that already have the straight 6 equipped, such as the 325i for example. Keep in mind that if you do some digging, you can find a Japanese car such as the Silvia for a similar price, although they are much, much harder to come by. If you get lucky and exercise patience, you may even come across the M3 variant of the E36, which sports a more powerful engine and much better suspension among other things. Wow. However, be prepared to pay for a hefty premium if you want an M3, as these cars have a high demand and well-kept examples could set you back upwards of $30,000. If you are willing to deal with higher mileage, you should be able to find examples for under $20,000 and even less. 
Here's the final thing I'll say. I asked Tyler how he would rate the difficulty of building in this chassis on a scale from beginner to intermediate to professional and to expert, and here's what he told me. He said that the most difficult part of working with this vehicle was getting the wiring to cooperate, while actually taking stuff apart was straightforward and simple. Add on the fact that sourcing parts can sometimes be a pain and he rated it at an intermediate level, so it's something to keep in mind if you've never done a project car before. That being said, I do hope that after watching this video it's inspired you, the viewers, to take the first step in getting your hands dirty and finally letting that project car see the light of day. Nevertheless, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you feel so inclined, leave a like, leave a subscribe, but uh, only if you like the video. Tell me what you like about it. If you didn't like the video, then you know I appreciate you taking the time out your day to watch. Uh, leave a dislike. Uh, tell me why you didn't like it. Um, shout out to Tyler for letting me film uh, the car, the BMW. Sweet ride. Um, I also appreciate the fact you were being real patient. I know it's been, what, well over a month since we actually shot the video, but you know, work, I guess. Tyler and I actually work at the same garage and we got to talk and like, yo, let's make a collaboration and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, man, hope the video's to your liking and all that jazz. Um, shout out to my buddy Zach for helping me film. Uh, it was our first time using a camera gimbal, so I realized some of the shots were a bit shaky, but hopefully we'll be able to smooth those out with practice in the future. Um, and also, shout out to my buddy Dan Larson because... Actually, while I'm filming this, we actually lost our internet connection, so I'm actually taking my entire desktop set up over to his place so we can actually upload the video. Obviously, it'll be uploaded, uh, you know, by the time you see this and all that jazz. But, uh, yeah, man, really appreciate it, and thanks for being patient with me. And, uh, yeah, stick around for the next couple of seconds, and I'll show you guys a preview of the next vehicle that's going to be on the channel. Hopefully, the channel's, you know, cool and all that. And I hope that uh, I can keep the channel focused on, you know, the vehicles, the people behind the vehicles and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. You guys take it easy.